Uh, hey everybody, this is Steve Wancho with Collider and I am here with the stars of Amazon's The Tick. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations on the show. I, it is, a, it's, it's different than everything else that's out there in like the superhero genre. It has a unique voice and I think that's one of the reasons why I really responded to it myself. For you guys, uh, talk a, I mean it's a little generic, but talk a little bit about how you got you know, involved in the project. Was it something that you went after? Did you know the property? I, I went after it and knew the property. I pursued it very, very aggressively. Uh, several restraining orders were filed against me, and I found alternate routes. Uh, no, I just got it as an audition. It, it felt like any number of things I get an email to go up for that seemed like I, I have a snowball's chance in hell of actually getting, but I was very passionate about it. And the further I got in the process, I kind of went like, if I don't get this one, I don't. I don't really know, you know, what what I do after that. Like this feels like the the one I've been waiting for, you know. Sure. So I just kept on doggedly doing my little song and dance routine to try to convince them that I wouldn't ruin their show. And he was a big Tick fan. Big Tick fan. Yeah. So in like the in the audition, you're like saying to them things that demonstrate knowledge. I tried knowledge. to not overplay that hand until after I'd gotten the job. Sometimes you find, especially like with this, where Ben Edlin, who's the showrunner on the show, is also the creator of the original property. And sometimes if you come in a little too aggressive, I've made that mistake before in auditions. But like, hey, I love this thing. They're like, okay, we need someone who can just show up and do the job. <laughs> Uh, so then after I got the part, I think he was a little alarmed by how much knowledge I had about it. I played a little naive, but was like, I just want this. It's great. How, how did you, uh, how'd you get involved? Um, uh, uh, ben sent the script and, and offered me the role of, of the terror. And I just, uh, I had no, knew nothing about the tick. Um, checked with my nerd friends and discovered that, you know, The Tick was a, a very beloved, you know, uh, c cartoon and, and uh, live action thing in 2000. And of course, the comic books in, um, when were that? When were the comic books? The late 80s. Late 80s. Yeah. Um, and they loved it. And um, reading the script, you know, um, you know, of course, I went online and I, I looked at some of the cartoon, looked at some of the live action and stuff. And to me, the script was, was just great. I could tell that it wasn't just going to be this um, non-stop silly show. I, I mean, you could, you know, immediately in the pilot, you can tell that he's going for, uh, you know, character growth, that there's going to be a season arc. We had a long talk over the form, uh, phone where he was kind of describing where he thought it, he was going to, you know, take the season. And um, it just seemed, you know, the, the, it was a great script. It was a really funny script. And uh, the Terror is a really interesting character. You know, 140-year-old guy had no idea how I was going to play him. And that was kind of scary. And, you know, where I fully kind of figured out how to play him was on the set of, to, of the pilot. You know, and luckily I had Ben and Wally to kind of help me figure out, you know, you know, the makeup was really informative. It helped me find the voice. And, and did, did you uh, did you have like a cold or something wrong with your voice on the day that you did the pilot? No. Was that was that? Uh, uh, I thought I I heard that you'd your raspy voice was th that you wanted to that 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 wasn't you know what was originally intended and uh, I mean because like the voice that you did was just amazing you know and and I and Maybe I've just got this mixed up. Am I awake? <laughs> <laughs> this is the result of New York Comic Con and doing maybe twenty to seventy-two interviews. Yeah, <laughs> it hasn't it hasn't been that crazy today, has it? it, it Comparatively, yeah. 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 It, it wasn't. Yeah, it's been it's been kind of it's been okay actually today, uh, and especially like we did the San Diego Comic Con uh, where we did like four times as many interviews as this and and that was weird because nobody had seen the show you know they'd seen the pilot and uh, now because I, th I, th I think after the first episode which is the pilot there was like a year in between and and a lot of things got kind of sorted out and it found its identity and 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 then now here today you know people have seen the show and it's a lot easier to talk about it you know you would imagine sure. <laughs> um, uh, seriously, I'm asleep, though, aren't I? And this is a dream? <laughs> uh, if only uh, that was true about... Our, I was, I was going to make a, a statement about government and Trump, and I'm, 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 gonna, I'm off the fucking rails. So well, sorry. I don't know. You're saying that Trump's a dream? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, it's if, a dream if come only, true? If but, only. But, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, he's the American dream. Yes. He he's the American dream if, before you went to bed that night, you ate, like, a wheel of cheddar. <laughs> I, I was just in London, and I almost wanted to wear a shirt that said, I'm sorry. 
Do you know what I mean? Uh, I, I apologize. But we're off on a tangent, and I'm going to make people in the red states very mad at me. And I, yeah, I'm, well, you know. You know what? <laughs> oh, God. Look, you know, I'm, I, I'd wear that I'm sorry. I'm the... I'm a human being. I think. I think not only humans. I think all species should wear. He, he <laughs> should should apologize on behalf uh, yeah. of life, of yeah. consciousness. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna switch it back to the show, and I'm gonna uh, say for for okay. So real quick, which we sort of didn't touch on how you got involved in the show. Let's just move on. You guys just. Um, I, I was in it, and I'm in it. Yeah, exactly. I was involved. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. like, like you're really not important to the show, though. I mean, you're not a main character. You're like a side character. Joke. <laughs> there is truth in that, but um, <laughs> you know there there is truth because I because I do think in many ways Tick is Arthur's sidekick. Yeah, I think this the the story follows Arthur, and uh, yeah, I'm 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 I, your sidekick. I, I was going to say, say though, I was being ways. a little facetious. Yeah. No, 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 I know, I know, and uh, <laughs> believe me, I got that. But. Um, <laughs> Uh, so delirious. <laughs> we, we all are. Uh, down here, you'll float too. But, but um, no, I, I think I think that's what's interesting about uh, this this incarnation of the tick is that before it has always been a little more of a, a didactic, straightforward superhero sidekick dynamic, and on this version of the show, I think Arthur and Tick are kind of symbiotic, depending on the whoa, circumstances. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Slow down, Marshall McLuhan. <laughs> Look, the medium well. is the message. That's all I'm trying to say here. Um, you guys, they announced the part two. So you, six episodes are on Amazon right now. Mm. And they've announced that the other six are going to be in February. So mm. my question is, you must have filmed all uh, 11 at the same time? Twelve. Oh, well, the uh, pilot was filmed. Yeah, yeah. 12, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. filmed them sequentially, yeah. But, uh, yeah, during the same block of time, yeah. Yeah, totally. So when you got the scripts, because sometimes... With like, for example, Game of Thrones, they have all the scripts done before they start filming. And We're still tweet. waiting on a couple of the scripts. Do I they? Think. Well, that they wow. that only makes sense for the for that thing, yeah. or else or else every no, it 10 makes sense days for us. That's what we should do. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense for us. Come on, what are you talking about? Well, no, I am curious though. When you guys got the when you okay, you're sitting down, you have the pilots picked up. You're gonna go make the 11 episodes. How many of those scripts did you have, or was it like each week you're getting a new one? Did you know any of the arc in like episode two of where it would go in episode seven? Dude, I'm still getting pages <laughs> revisions for episode six. We tell them it's locked, and they're like, we just need one more day. Yeah, it's um, on Amazon. Well, I think we started we started having read the first four, and I feel like Ben had. I'm sorry. I'm, I feel like I'm like making you. Like, <laughs> Uh, I think I think Ben had uh, talked to all of us at the beginning, like uh, joining the show, sort of uh, the larger arc and the stories he wanted to tell and some of the ideas. And some of those ideas stayed the same and some of them shifted. You know, some of them became sort of more long term ideas for over the course of an entire series, if we get so lucky as to continue. Um, but I think we started with the first four scripts. Yeah. And they, they, yeah. Were, they were in really great shape. And I remember reading those first four and and. I was quite uh, jet lagged and tired and emotional, and uh, and I uh, I cried when I read the first four scripts because uh, I uh, out of just out of uh, I, how beautiful Ben's words were, you know, and uh, and also just with relief that wow, okay, so the pilot was was great, but we were still everyone was still kind of finding their way, but. This, I, I just, it was just such a relief. It was like, oh God, this is, this has got the potential to be something great, you yeah. know? And uh, I love it, I, uh, I, I love it. I th as we went on, uh, you know, it's a very ambitious show and, and we, uh, you know, this, the, the scripts got closer and closer to the time sure. that we were shooting. And, you know, it's a common thing, you know, but like, and, and especially for such an ambitious show like as, as this, you know, where it's a superhero sh set show, uh, so it's in this world of superheroes. You have to have at least one big set piece in each. Right. Episode, There's a denouement know? that we all knew we were working towards. How we were going to get there sometimes. Shifted. It's pronounced announcement. But oh, anyway, okay. Carry yeah. On. yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna. This is. A, I'm gonna go on a sidebar real quick, just because uh, uh, I have to. Um, you're obviously. You. I love Watchmen, especially the director's cut. Uh, can you walk? We're at New York Comic Con. 
can you walk around the convention floor and or do you know what I mean? Like, or do they part a little bit because of Watchmen? I'm just I have to geek out a little bit. Well, I think when when, when we're kind of moving along, yeah, I can I can pretty much walk through. Every now and then, somebody may come up that's already got like a printed out something that knew I was going to be here to, to sign. Um, but yeah, I can pretty much kind of walk through, and, and and people don't notice. But then when somebody does, you know, and maybe I sign something, then other people notice, and it's it's that kind of thing. But it's not like you know instant recognition. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to bring up Watchmen because I think the director's cut is awesome. You know what I mean? Now let's switch over to the person who's immediately on my left and ask, so uh, do more people want to talk about John Wick Chapter 2, Shaun of the Dead, being the voice of Darth Maul, and there was something else I had. Uh, there was another geeky thing. Sh Sean Wick Chapter Maul? Is that what you're thinking Yes, of? exactly. Yeah. What do people? What's the thing that people always want to geek out over? You know, you've been in a lot of cool things. Well, I, 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 I've, I've had a very diverse career, and also I do a lot of. I've got a little, lot of little side projects that yes. people like. I do these sassy Trump videos. Sir, I am aware. Uh, <laughs> which, it, wherein I, um, I dub over Donald Trump's speeches and interviews uh, with an incredibly camp bitchy voice that matches his camp bitchy dainty uh, body language and and the content of what he of what he says in order to remind people that this is the president of the United States and he is actually saying these actual words which I don't change at all uh, so I do uh, I, so I do that and like yesterday at breakfast at the hotel I'm staying in this lady walks past me and then she comes back and says, oh my God, I, I follow you. And I was like, oh, okay. And she said, I, 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 your Trump videos, I've been, I, the, thank you for doing those Trump videos. I, you know, this is a lady, a New York lady that I've never met. And uh, she, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's a strange thing to be recognized. Cause I'm not, you know, I'm not physically sure. in them. I don't like aggressively promote these things either, you know? So uh, yeah. I never know what people are going to say, actually. I, I was going to say, I just want to point out that this is in New York City. Yeah. Where he's from. Uh, That's how where much, he's from, yeah. That, how much people hate him here. It's uh, crazy. Oh, God. It's still a very blue city. You you got that right. Yeah. But uh, also, like, I, I'm born and raised in New York, and we've been dealing with him longer than anybody. We, like, know who he is. He's, like, a New York landlord, <laughs> you know? So I feel like New Yorkers are like, yeah, we're, we've been hip to this for a long time. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. I feel like I've, I've really pushed you guys into uh, pushed into the political spectrum, and I'm so sorry. It's barely a push. It's like a uh, <laughs> doesn't, yeah. doesn't take much. Yeah. <laughs> for for I've been asking this of a lot of people uh, uh, because you're at New York Comic Con. Um, is there anything that you collect? Like, are you a geek about anything that's here? <laughs> here. Like, like, like oh. everything, <laughs> everything. Jackie's been like siphoning off toys that other people give to him to me. He was like, I thought you might want this for a shack. I, I collect way too much. Uh, I, 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 literally just about anything that a person can collect, especially of the, of the nerd variety. Uh, so me being at a, a place like this and having some amount of disposable income now that I'm on a TV show and aren't constantly terrified of paying next month's rent is, is very dangerous. I spent all of yesterday just shopping. <laughs> yeah. Is there, is there anything? Uh, no, there isn't really. My kids both collect things. I, I maybe I remember reading about the creator of Pokemon, who uh, was influenced by this psychological study. Maybe I'm making this up, but like uh, it was it was based. Boys have this propensity towards collecting things gotta catch them all is like a very boy male thing you know and uh, I don't know if I I see it in my own my own son with Pokemon with like uh, football cards and stuff sure. you know um, but I God, but it is making me think there is something that I feel like I, I've got to be a completist about I eh? I don't know. Just going with back music to at all, like with music records, music, yeah. not not really. Yeah. I suppose also it's that's all become slightly devalued with like digital the, stuff. Yeah, digital like music with um, owning uh, the owning DVDs or CDs or video games or just kind of anything. Like uh, I don't know if haven't you noticed that like the younger generations are gravitating towards the acceptance of streaming yeah. and oh, non-physical yeah, format yeah, yeah. Right. but 
those of us who are older, there's something about holding it that I still gravitate See, towards. See, and I'm younger, and I, I still am all about physical media. I don't know if it's the weird male possessive thing or what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't read the Dr. Pokemon psychological study yet. Can I ask a question as a collector? And I'm just curious. Did yeah. either of you notice anything missing from your trailers and or props on set and or costumes when he was around? <laughs> I showed a lot of restraint. And it was very, very difficult, but I've been very uh, I, uh, comprehensive about making sure I collect multiples of all the sort of swag that we're producing for these different conventions. I feel like I'm building my own little archive, you know, so it's, it's was like... Was there an Arthur costume that went missing on the set and everyone wondered where it was and no one checked his car? No, I tried to do the like, hey, can I wear it to Comic-Con for San Diego? I was like, do you mind if I... Uh, oh, no, it got lost in the luggage. Uh, but they wouldn't they wouldn't let me take it they they p care about that thing more than they care about me as a person it was mainly uh it was mainly cash that we yeah had. i stole a lot of cash right yeah, yeah. to I support my collecting i do uh i am a collector but i'm i really i try to keep i'm a minimalist collector and um so you only collect so one I've of each thing <laughs> i've collected no one of one thing and i and it's the type of thing that you know i just i i love it so much i have to take it everywhere i go it's faux ham. <laughs> Great product. Port, port flavored food substitute. Sure. So what's the story? Do you guys, has anyone told you anything about ratings? Or are you just as in the dark as everyone? Yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, that, that's part of, the, I think, the whole like, company ethos. I mean, it's not just an Amazon thing. It's in the streaming era. Totally. No one knows anything. Right. But, uh, but, uh, but I would say, though, that... Uh, People that I know who download uh, shows and movies illegally. Um, <laughs> no one does that. That no is one no. Does you that. mean criminals? Is that who you're talking about? Uh, the criminal sort? A certain type of criminal. Arr! Um, the, uh, the, the tick is like, you know, unlike on the Pirate Bay, has been like at the top of the list. On Cody, it's like the top TV show <laughs> Great. that you can, you know. So I guess that says something. Yeah, about but those it. losers don't get free shipping on all orders. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, what, but, but being serious, actually, <laughs> all, all kidding aside, I, I use Amazon. I buy a lot on Amazon, yeah. and I, I really support what Jeff does as a, you know, as, a, as an owner. Like he produces content that I'm interested in. You mean I want J JB. J yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I'm not on yeah. a, I'm not on that name of a basis. Right. I, I yeah. just call him Jeff. <laughs> You're only on a first right. name I'm basis. On a first name <laughs> you haven't worked through initial no, but basis. I mean, yeah, like yeah. I love Man from High Castle. Also, like. He, he, you know, the company is And on the movie side, they've been doing totally. incredible stuff. They, they yeah. produce the really cool stuff. The river is just, I mean, that's one of the best rivers. The goddesses are wonderful. Some of my favorite goddesses. I was going to, I'm going off on the thing. Uh, uh, do you know if they're doing any merchandise, though? Have you heard that? <sighs> I mean, yeah, I've been pushing this yeah. uphill hard. There's some stuff in the works. There been uh, there there was a, a tick Funko Pop they had at San Diego. Yeah, that's right. And there's I've, an Arthur one as well. I've seen pictures of people sculpting the Arthur, and not fans, but the ones that are in the work. But I, it's not real until it's real. So I think we're close to you know they're waiting for the full fan response to s test out what the level of marketplace is. But I I think the three of us are all in the works in, in some capacity in some forms and scales. Well, I mean, the, the company has to believe in the show because they're they're paying to be here and pushing the season. You know what I mean? Like They made me pay to be in the show, but otherwise they're paying. <laughs> and and by the way, yeah. you, you probably would. I'm joking. I'm, I'm completely... He's a super fan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you so you really don't know. Have you heard any rumblings about like a season two beyond... I mean, there's like 1B that's coming out in February. Or is it one of these things where they're like, you know, you got to wait a little while longer? I don't know. It you depends. Know, I, mean, I don't think there's like anything uh, official. I like, hope you're no, about no, to no, no, no decisions. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I do. I kind of think they're like in in early talks. And to me, you know, when you talk about like, you know, can we tell like how big, how many people are watching it? And they, they, you know, Amazon's policy is they don't come out with the numbers. But one of the things that I was told a while back is that the pilot was uh, the most watched pilot. And, um, you know, you can tell from the numbers that a lot of people went out of their way to, to go onto the Internet to write a review. And uh, that number was, you know, really high compared to the other two pilots that we were up against. And it seems to me that the reaction of the show 
you know, it's, it's, it's got, you know, like a 92% on tomato, you know, it's, yeah. it's a really liked show. Everybody that I know that's uh, seen it, you know, thinks it's hysterical and, and, you know, they pretty much binge watch the whole thing. Yeah, no, and, and, and for so people, I, I, I would be shocked if it didn't get picked up. I mean, I've, I mean what I really I've heard would. is that they've, that Amazon have offered Ben, uh, I mean, it's really a prime deal. But the thing is, he's got to have the script delivered by 9 a.m. the next morning. So they, they told me that if I buy a Kindle Fire, they can add on a season two for only twenty nine ninety nine. So I'm debating that. I'm waiting to see if the price drops a little bit. Sure. Uh, I don't they have a guarantee, though, that if they shipped it to you. And then, like within that's only with pre-orders. Oh, pre-orders. That's with my bad. pre-orders. If you place a pre-order and then the price drops between then and the time the thing comes out, you get uh, the lowest price. You're right. You're right. I was wrong about so that. So I'm waiting a little bit to see if, if season two drops. I like a man who can admit when he's wrong. Oh, I'm wrong all the time, sir. Yeah, Good man. All too. the time. I, I recommended this show. I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, no, the show is. How dare good. you? I, this show is really good. Our I was totally last interview. I'm being, you know, I know they're about to storm off set. <laughs> Furious. <laughs> um, being, being serious, because I know i got to wrap with you, but I really think it's cool that Wally uh, did the first two episodes. He's a really good director. And so what was it like working with him on the pilot and then the second episode? It's like being in Apocalypse Now. <laughs> <laughs> It was crazy. It was really good it's, fun, though. It's also interesting because, like, I mean, he's such... Uh, he's a really good DP for yeah. people that don't realize. Well, and also, I mean, you know, he wasn't the DP on uh, the on the show, um, but he has such a good mind of, for sort of visual language, but also visual geography and understanding how to break down a scene and shots and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, would, would say to the DP, like, you should be doing this instead of that. But... Um, the thing that was really interesting is he's mostly worked on such a humongous scale, yes. you know, uh, that that the apocalypse now sometimes like that feeling came in when it, where it's like, oh, he's not used to not having two years to shoot a movie <laughs> and five hundred million dollars, <laughs> you know. So it was like he was like begging the gods to like give him the natural occurrences he wanted because uh, we couldn't afford rainstorms or things like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, or shoes that fit. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you're trying. You're, I was gonna make another joke, but uh, uh, my, my, one of my last things for you. Um, I'm always curious about memorable moments from filming. Is there like a day or two that you'll always remember from the making of uh, of the show? Funny or not funny? I think, like uh, like somebody trapped in an abusive relationship, I uh, I blanked out a lot of it. <laughs> And by I don't mean an abusive relationship with uh, with a person. Because just with the costume. Just with the costume. Yeah. yeah. Um, what you're saying? It wasn't pleasant to wear. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying it was, it was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I I don't know. There were so many memories. Yeah. There there was a moment on the pilot. It was the first night that Peter was filming, and it's when the Tick and Arthur meet up in the catwalk. And uh, so we're at this like elevated platform in this space that used to be a, a gas plant, you know, and they have the camera up on this big crane. Wally Fister's there in the director's chair. And I'm here, a lifelong fan of The Tick, standing across from The Tick, about to do a scene where The Tick and Arthur meet. And I just kind of went like, wow. And I turned to Peter and it was his first day, his first time wearing the full suit. And I said, can you believe this? And he said, I can't hear you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I also could barely see him. Yeah, they had to redesign the suit a little bit. <laughs> yeah. so you're saying that the line in, oh, I'm going to get to you, but the line in episode two, there's been a change? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Right, now now he has a range of movement. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that first day of filming, Peter was taking... Now I have a 20% yeah. range of yeah. movement. I'll say this. I, I Peter is an incredibly good lip reader, and people do not give him enough credit for that, because that first, the pilot episode, there's a lot of... Oh, when Griffin stops talking, that's my chance to... When I see the lips stop flapping, that's when I start my line. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I definitely remember the, uh, the, the doing the pilot because, again, that was, to me, when we were picked up, you know, I, uh, that, that was my guide on, on where to go with sure. the character. So I would watch that 
because I only did one scene. You know, I'd watch it over and over to remind myself, okay, this is the character. Um, I also really enjoy uh, the dynamic between uh, um, me and, and Yada, our characters, and also her as an actress. So it was really great working across from her. But I think the most memorable day um, is for two, two reasons. Um, it's it's the, the, the day that I first really have a scene with, with, with Arthur. And, and the, the show was really building towards that moment. So, I mean, a lot of the show is, a, is about getting to this moment at, at this point in, uh, in time. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff going on, but that's, that's kind of like one of the, the main plot points going on. So it was really great finally getting to do a scene across from him. And then the second thing that made it really great that day is I've never, you know, in all my time as an actor, I've never uh, been allowed to, or I've never been afforded uh, the, 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 the writing that, to where they made my character a, dr a drummer. And um, so I got, you know, there I am just pounding away on the drums on, on that same day that him and I did our, our first scene. Well, I'll say Jackie, Jackie too is an incredible drummer. And if I had to pick a second moment that sticks in my mind, when we did the table read for table that read. episode, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, yeah. they describe in the script how you know you start seeing the terror do this big drum solo and it cuts to other scenes and the drum solo stays underneath as we're cutting to different locations. And Jackie, as they were reading that description, did the entire drum solo with his fingers on the table, like a proper like. Wait, where? Did, how did he get a cymbal there? Like <laughs> there was nothing there, but he was making like completely different sounds for like five straight minutes. And, and then, then his fingers had to be reattached. Uh, yeah, and this was a day when it was, it was probably a hundred degrees in on Harlem. a lunch break in between on a lunch filming. break. So we didn't. It wasn't even. We had a break. Yeah. We were sweltering. We were. I'd done my back in. I, I was dreading getting back into the costume. And then we had this read through. I was like, oh god, a read through. And then, you know, he on the doing his finger drums on the thing by the end of it i was like oh i love this show <laughs> oh god yeah um uh my last question because morgan's gonna grab me uh what can you for fans that have seen all six what can you tease about uh season 1b coming in february uh some some really cool surprises some new characters uh, uh and I just think it gets better and better. It just gets so weird and funny. And I, I like what happens to my character as well. You know, I, I kind of start to get a little bit more introspective without going all kind of dark night and everything. I, uh, I get about as dark as Tick goes, really, you know? I, I think also like the second half of the season we get to cash a lot of the checks that we've been writing yeah. in the first six episodes you know I think they very beautifully laid up all these different elements across this whole ensemble cast but like I mean you know what Jackie was saying about how the whole first six episodes are about me trying to prove that this guy is still alive you know sure. and my sense of sanity and everyone else's perception of me and my sanity is all in relation to whether or not this guy actually exists and now I've proven it and now he's kidnapped me <laughs> And that's where the start, you know, of, of the second half of the season is. Uh, so it's kind of really exciting because we get to run from there. And it's like, well, now the stakes are really high. Now everything is at risk. You know, I have to actually, like, put up or shut up. It's, it's exciting to me. And there are also more hugs. People like the hugs in the first half of the yeah, season. So I want to keep on yeah. selling. We got some good hugs in the second half of the season. It's a very hug-based show. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed that, uh, oh, well, I was sh I'm I guess I can spoil that there is a, also a, a, an equally long hug between uh, the tick and the terror. There's just a moment of recognition of, you know, evil meeting pureness. <laughs> game recognized game. You know, I have a different approach, but I respect your work, your craftsmanship. <laughs> it's just my hat's off to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's just a gentleman's hug. <laughs> I, I, I mean it sincerely. Uh, thank you for all three of you seriously thank you for putting up with some of my stupid questions and some of them that were okay and all stupid i was gonna say some of them were okay but in, in all seriousness i i really recommend the show because the writing is really good and it's different than anything else out there and it takes weird turns that like you're not expecting and that's yeah. one of the things i've respected the about acting it. is great the oh, acting is a little said that before but the I just acting is a little you. overrated but i mean especially the guy in the in the large blue suit was that you Ah. <laughs> yeah, you're kidding. They're really good. Uh, uh, thank you all uh, for coming in. Thank Sincerely. you very much, man. Yeah. For real. Pleasure. Yeah. I, really, I really mean it. Pleasure thank talking you. to you. Appreciate Th it. Thank you.